Hello, you're listening to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Brandon Elliott. This show will be going over all aspects of real estate investing and is intended to educate, motivate, and prepare you to take action on your first or next real estate investment. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Brandon Elliott. Today, we have a special guest in the house. What's up, Tom? How are we doing today, brother? Doing great, man. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. So, Tom, you and I met in a private, like a, a small mastermind group that we're a part of with Cole and Cody. And your story really impacted me. I, I thought it was very unique and very crazy. It's like you're over in Arizona area, but you started doing some fix and flips about five years ago, 2017, you got into the real estate game. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm actually curious what inspired you to get into real estate. I know that you were a swimmer back in the day and so much more has happened to you, but you really started focusing on the real estate, doing some fix and flips, learned from that, jumped into some Airbnb, some short-term rentals, and after just about you know a dozen or so properties under your belt, making some great ROI off short-term rentals that started changing the trajectory of your, your life in so many ways. So for anybody out there that doesn't know your story, your background, who you are, where you're from, do you mind just giving that 10,000 foot view of, of what Tom sure. is up to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, currently I uh, have a dozen short-term rentals and... Uh, you know, focused on that business. And I just launched a virtual assistant company to, I mean, it's my team that manages mine, but we're built for scale. So I wanted to bring that to market because, you know, there's a million ways to manage, but ultimately you don't want to be managing it yourself. But to back up how I got there. Yeah. So actually right before 2017, I I was back in Connecticut. That's where I'm from. I had a retail business and actually back in 2014 i had the option to either go into real estate or go and open a retail business and for some reason i chose to go into the retail business yeah that ended up not going so well so i what didn't go well with that it was a very niche retail business it was uh, okay. alternative energy heating which is heavily reliant on harsh winters okay so like wood burning pellet burning gas like fireplaces, wood stoves, stuff like that. So it's highly seasonal and it's highly dependent on harsh winters in the Northeast. And Connecticut falls right on this line of some years it's really harsh and some years it's not so harsh. And as a startup in 2015 and 16, actually 2014, we did really well, like almost back to black from a startup in just a few months, which was fantastic. But 15 and 16 back to back, which had to my knowledge, at least in my lifetime, had never happened at that point. 15, 16 had two of the most mild winters on record. And so the whole industry took like a 40% nosedive. And as a startup with minimal cash flow at that point, or you know, whatever, minimal capital at that point, it took a big hit. So the business was going down. And I was like, well, might as well make a jump into real estate. So I was like, I can either carry this this huge loss forward or go flip a house and start working my way out. I'm, so why real estate though? Was there like, did you have any friends, family members, or you were just like, all right, well, I'm in debt now. Now I need to get out of it. I see some people making money with it. Let me just try this out. Pretty much. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, essentially that's, that's kind of how it went. Okay. <laughs> you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, you know, the TV shows, you know, yeah. Fixer Upper and, and, Sure. Tarks. Property yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. shows. So I was like, well, you can make a ton of money in flipping. And so I went out and I just, it was like a blessing and a curse because I hit a home run on my first flip. So oh, I did okay. my first flip. It took nine months, but I made like 125 grand on it. Let's go. And so I was like, all right, this is easy. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I was like, oh, sweet. It's exactly what I thought. There's big money in it. So then I, then I bought another property actually in Arizona in 2018. And then we decided to move out here. So I ended up flipping that property and made about 60,000 on that one. Okay. And then, but, but again, it was like, it was like the time frame. So flipping, I've learned 
after several years is not as fast as everyone makes it sound like every it, like everyone always says like 90 days it is never the case with 90 days for at least in my experience yeah when you're small right sure so, when you're just getting started there's always i've never been a part of one real estate transaction that there wasn't something unique or something out of the scope of work that didn't you know pop up out of nowhere like yes. it's usually at least one or two times that like, oh God, we just found this once we opened up the wall. It's like, God, that's yep. gonna cost extra more time, you know, more money. Absolutely. Every time. Absolutely. And that's and and that's exactly how all of them go. Yeah. And you know, or you get into it and it's like, okay, it's just gonna be a lipstick flip. And then we're like, well, maybe we need to expand the bathroom a little bit. Sure. And then yeah. that that just snowballs into like the whole house getting torn apart. So yeah, yeah. And so, I think yeah. with time, you know, once in the beginning, it always starts off that way with time and experience and knowledge and your team really starting to be built out. I, I think it can develop into something more like, all right, let's let's plan for this attack right from the beginning of we're going to expand the bathroom or whatever it is and really right. narrow it down so you can shorten up the time. But yes. I love yeah. It. Yeah. And also it also the deals that I've gotten into with flips, you know, not the first one. The first one we knew was going to be a total rehab. The second ones started off, the second and third and fourth property started off. But the, the thing is, we got them from wholesalers. So it, with, with wholesaling, especially at that time, it was super cutthroat. So like you'd go in and have to decide in like five minutes, yeah. you were going to buy the house, what you were going to do with it, you know, and try to estimate how much it's going to cost. And it's like, I have a budget, like so much money per square foot, but this stuff grows with experience also but in the beginning i was like all right i think i think it should be about like you know 30 dollars a square or whatever it was and but like you have to make a decision because there's five other people that are ready to buy the house and it's like okay yeah. do the numbers work i think they're gonna work like it looks like it should be good we should be you know six figure profit so we should have a margin to work with in case that comes down and then we can go from there yeah so but also the other factor of that is, is contractors, right? So sure. you have to have the right team and, you know, just the projects tended to take a lot longer. So it's a different animal, uh, a different way of thinking than, you know, the entrepreneur or the business mindset versus the hands-on contractor. It, it truly yeah. is. So learning how to lead, learning how to guide and learning how to really make sure that you're setting the contractor up for success and that you guys are all transparent communication. People are showing up on time. There's right. rewards, but there's also consequences involved to make sure that it's not just lenient, then that things over time will get done how it should. Yeah. But it doesn't start off that way if you don't know how to properly lead. And I've been the case of that many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And leadership, I think, is an ever evolving yeah learning process for sure and it's especially when you grow up and didn't necessarily get taught those skills and you you essentially have to learn them on your own from yeah books and and other leaders and and all of that and, and you have like in my case like i have to unwire and and i still do to this day i have to like yeah. unwire how i was programmed and yeah, the then bs that we've learned in the beginning yeah yes yeah yes so yeah, I mean, the problem I was having with flipping was there's no cash flow. You're into it. You're just spending, 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 and then it's you a, finally sell and get that cash back. It's a high paying job at the end of the day. And that's yes. what people need to realize. It's like, it, it can be lucrative for sure, but realize that the time, energy, and efforts that you're putting into it and and everything else in between, you know, it, it turns out to be a high paying job. Right. It can be very lucrative. Like it could yeah. be seven figure job if oh, you really easy. treat it that way, you know, yeah. and that's awesome. But then there's high taxes on it too. So you got to figure out what you can cherry pick, what you can burn, what you can Airbnb. And, and I guess, you know, that turned out for you. You just started thinking, well, wow, I'm getting taxed on this crazy. It's taking long. This is a high paying job. I would really like some monthly passive income coming from this. You yes. started discovering short term rentals. Yeah. Yeah. So then I came into short term rental. A couple of people started talking to me. I ended up working with a mentor to learn the business. And at the time, because I had just gotten into a new project for Flip, I yeah. was tight on cash. So to, to go buy another property, 
And I, and I wasn't privy to creative finance at that point either. So my way I got started was arbitrage. So it was way easier and way less overhead to go and rent a property. And all I'm paying is the down payment on the property, you know, first and last month's rent and or, or whatever, you know, the first month's rent and security deposit, and then go and furnish the house. So for arbitrage, for any listeners out there that doesn't know exactly what we're talking about here, arbitrage is when you are simply renting the property and you are able to sublease it out. So you're in yeah. control of, you know, being basically the manager of it. And, and ideally you could set up that deal that you're not in control of the property, but like you don't have any like liabilities really attached to it in one form or another. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still have, you know, depending on what state you're in, you have tenant landlord rights and you're liable for so much of the property. But the biggest thing is you just have to have it in writing. You got to have that sublease agreement and you got to make sure, like if anyone's looking at going arbitrage, the biggest things are you want to make sure, like I just stay away from HOAs because HOAs will make your life miserable. All the time I have people like, well, what about this situation what about you know this one's gated but there's no guard like if it's a gated community do not i don't know in my opinion like i just don't even bother with it because i learned my lesson the hard way going into a gated community and you know they'll still like a gated community means there is an hoa and people live in a gated community because they don't want random people coming in (laughs) They want the privacy. Yeah. yeah. So once you start breaking that and you're yeah. having random people in, it really starts, it starts popping up in the quarterly meetings. You know? yes. And then, yes. Everyone uh, and then will start talking target. about it. It creates problems. So I just stay away from HOAs yeah. and you got to make sure that you have those, those agreements. And w- like when I do arbitrage, when I'm going to a landlord, cause everyone's like, Oh, do you pay them more? Do you, you know, do you pay more on rent? Do you, we're essentially acting as a property manager. So, no, I don't pay them more rent. And what I do is incentivize them because I say, listen, you know, things will happen with the house, like little things are going to break or go wrong. And if that happens, then I I give like, I'll fix it up to a certain dollar amount for, per month. You know, I do 500. Some people do 200, 300, but I do 500 because that covers just about any basic repair up to appliances in the house, you know? So, so essentially we're the, the landlord's best possible option for a renter because we take care of the house. You know, landlords care about two things. They care about getting their money on time and they care about their house being taken care of. Yeah. And when when you explain to them too, like, Hey, we're also getting it professionally cleaned every, every time, then that really seems appealing too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What I've learned as well is most people would almost think because you're having so much traffic in and out that there's going to be more wear and tear and damage to the property. In my personal experience, I've almost felt the opposite. I've almost felt like long-term tenants really make a home there and they really start settling in. They Mm -hmm. start, you know, treating, you know, the walls as if they build it themselves and they don't mind putting a hole through it or whatever, or messing with the doorknobs versus you know, when it's Airbnb short term rentals, they're in there for maybe a couple of days and they're just like, they're not touching much. They're, they're sleeping down and that's it. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, the biggest thing that I've noticed that gets messed up is the tracks for the closets. I don't know why, but when you have sliding doors, the little, the little th- piece that holds the doors in place, they always break that. I don't know how or why, but they all get broken in my houses. But really, yeah. it, it's so annoying. Yes, we, we haven't had that in ours, uh, thankfully. But I don't. I, I'm like, things. how? Like, what are you doing? I don't understand this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm here. that that's what I run into. But that's like the one like annoying piece that I've run into. But you're absolutely right. Like, people treat it more like a hotel where you're taking care of stuff. You know, they might not take care of the linens or whatever, but you know, they're yeah. expecting laundry service. So, yeah. but the, the house itself gets very little damage. Yeah, it's good. Talk to me. So how did you get these contracts? How did you get the arbitrage method? 
obviously it looked attractive to you because you're like, hey, no, you know, I don't need to buy this property. I don't need to have the responsibilities of ownership. But instead, I can just sublease it, which is awesome. Right. You know, very little into it. You just need to pay for the the furnishing and then manage it, right? So yeah. how did you get these contracts locked in? So in the beginning, so I'll give a, a big tip. So in the beginning, I started going out and calling landlords myself, and I was having a really hard time with it. Yeah. But then what I figured out is if I go to a realtor who's representing landlords who are yeah. renting, they already have the relationships, they already have the connections and they have a lot of them. So yes. when you go, Hey, this is what I'm looking to do. Who do you have that fits that would be a good match? The next day I had like three houses in my inbox, got in touch with the landlords and two of them, we signed a lease. And what I did because realtors don't, make a whole lot of money on commission when they're selling a rental as opposed to like selling a house you know usually they're getting like first month's rent or like half of that or just a yeah. flat rate commission so i'd incentivize them just say hey i'll I'll throw you an extra 500 dollars if we sign a lease if you bring me somebody and we sign a lease and we can get this done because the the other the other benefit of arbitrage is it's time right so yes. we're not we're not going through closing we're not going we can literally sign a lease today and start moving in. Yeah. You good. know, so from that perspective, like money loves speed, right? So we can we can start moving in, we can get the house set up in as little as a couple of days. One of my friends at literally, I mean, he owns the house, but he just st did a 24 hour turnaround and got a house fully set up and listed in 24 hours. Yeah. And I was like, you're crazy. But yeah, I love it. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. But I mean, hey, man, he's a hustler. And, you know, it's like goals, you know, I'm like, oh, that's I just like know how much work is involved in that. <laughs> X level. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't know if I'm that if I'm that aggressive, but yeah. you know. <laughs> maybe like two, three days. Yeah. 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 You know, if you got everything ready. But anyways, you know, it's, it's all about speed. So it's just, yes. you know, time to listing and, and cash flowing. When you do arbitrage, you know, you can do little tricks like it's August 22nd. So, you know, if we could sign a lease and not start it till September 1st, yeah. then that gives us eight days of, but if you do that on the 10th and say, hey, you know, because it's going to take a couple of weeks to get in here, can we do, or, or maybe the 10th is a little early, but you know what I'm saying? Like you get yeah, some yeah. extra time. And also if you know it's an area that's going to do well, go for a longer term lease. Yeah. You know, especially with how rental rates have been moving around. Now, do you give any clause in the lease that, hey, if this property doesn't work at all, if you and me hate each other and it's just not working out, can we break this lease? Yeah, I definitely recommend trying that, trying to work that in there because some areas might not work, some houses might not work. So yeah, I mean, you should definitely have like an exit clause where yeah. it's like, hey, if this isn't working out, 30 days notice, and we mutually agree to break the lease. Yeah. You know, that's not the goal, but yeah, sometimes things don't work so that we don't end up in a lawsuit. And Has that ever happened to you? So not like that, but I did go into a gated community one time. When I was first starting, I was just so eager to go out and get properties that I kind of bypassed the don't go in an HOA law. And we found this house and it was great. And it was everything that it was in Scottsdale. And we were like, this is this, this thing's going to crush. And the problem was that the landlord, I called the HOA and they were like, well, we won't talk to you because you're not a tenant and you're not the landlord. So we'll only talk to the landlord. And I was like, here's what I want to do. Can I do this? And like, I'm talking to the head of the HOA and she's like, we're not going to talk. We're not going to discuss this with you. And I was like, do you allow short-term rental or no? And she's like, I, you have to talk to the landlord. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So she literally stonewalled me. And I was just like, all right. And then I talked to the landlord and he's like, oh, no, I talked to them. Everything's fine. And I'm like, well, can you send me the bylaws of the HOA so I can read them? And it was just a really sketchy situation. And like he sent them to me, but it was like bottom line was we couldn't do it. 
but he swore up and down we could. But it turned out, so long story short. So he was lying to you. Oh, he was flat out lying to me. I mean, so what's that's weird, though, because who's going to be under the consequence is really him. I mean, you could get kind of you could get pushed back and they could try kicking out your people every time. But well, it was a gated community and they had a guard. So what happened was we got I spent all this money setting it up. I actually put some money into the house to like paint the walls because I had this weird paint scheme that was just awkward. So I was like, I'm just going to repaint. So I put some money into the house, made it super nice. It was, oh man, that house was going to do so good. But my first guest shows up and she gets to the gate and she goes, and and I had like given them her name. So they knew she was coming. She got to the gate and she goes, oh, I'm going to this address. It's an Airbnb. And the guy was, the gate guard was like, you know, mall cop and he's like nope airbnb absolutely not it wouldn't even let him in the gate and mm-hmm. this is it was october 30th 2019 so i knew because it was the night before halloween and they were planning on trick-or-treating the neighborhood with their kids wow. so he, he, they're calling me and i'm like so i'm calling the guard and it's like freaking 11 o'clock at night and i'm like i'm like dude just let him in you know like yeah. just let him go sp- I, I get that you don't allow it we'll fix that but let them go stay the night and we'll figure it out. I'll move them tomorrow. It's 11 o'clock at night. He's like, absolutely not. They're not coming through the gate. And I was like, yeah, dude, really? So luckily I had another house available and I was able to move them over there, but it turned into a mess. Oh, that's good. Thank God. Thank God yeah. for backup plans. You know, I think maybe the learning point or the eye opening part too, right there is, you know, the guard was tough to deal with, but guess who else was right. The head of HOA too. Yeah. So yeah, this is why I just like I, I yeah. after that I'm like never again. You. I'm not touching HOAs at all. Yeah, that makes sense. So whatever happened in that that particular you know any so what actually happened was the guy loved it because I had the cash flow to pay the rent. Right. Yeah. It turns out the house was in foreclosure. Uh the guy was going broke. He was all of, he, he was in a, so he had he two care. properties. What's he that? Didn't, he didn't care. That's no. not. No, was the, house say- was, the house was going to auction. Yes. And so, you know, I was going to get screwed no matter what. Yeah. Because it would have ended up going to auction with all my stuff in there and they would have locked the house one day. Yeah. And I would have been like, you know, what's going on? So then his other property was in foreclosure like all of his possessions were getting repossessed, like all his cars and everything it turned out were getting repossessed. So we ended up suing him, but it, it, I was so far down the totem pole. Like I was just out, you know? Yeah. It ended wow. up costing me about 20 grand. Oh, about 20 grand. Wow. Well, yeah. See, that's, was- that's, that, that's um, one of those, that's a tough situation. And, and that should be an eye opening side too, because when you hear one thing from HOA, but and they're very adamant of like we're not going to talk with you at all yeah and then you actually talk to the owner and he's like no no of course you can you yeah know, yeah just, there's some big inconsistencies once you actually see the documents so it's like oh no it it doesn't say right. that you can but then yeah. he was he was really sketchy about sending me the document he's like oh i don't have the you know i don't, sure. I don't have access to the hoa documents and you know they on their website it's like this old document from the 90s and yeah Blah blah blah, and I'm like, what, too many like, red flags. Yeah, yeah they, it, I, but I was just so green. Yeah, yeah, I was just so eager. I was like, this. I was just all I was looking at was how much money this thing's gonna make. I was, you know, I was looking at like, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars a month consistently out of this house, like net. Yeah, you know, and that's one of those things. That it's hard to look past when you're so focused on the vision, the goal, and you can see the money coming in yeah. straight to your bank account. You're like, yes, but. Yeah. Sometimes we get blinded to the red flags that are right in front of us, but that's for sure. I know, I know you won't make those mistakes again, right? Oh, like, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely not. That's what gives you stories to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Of that's course. Where when, when, when I see new people coming in, I'm like, listen, here's what happened to me. Yeah. Because they're like, but this, but that. And I'm like, you're trying too hard to make yeah. it work. Yeah. You know, like you can't force something to work. If it doesn't work, there's too much emotion in it. Right. Yeah. Like people get so emotionally attached and, and usually it's emotionally attached to the income, the money. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, it's good. So we get so emotionally attached and I'm like, listen, take emotion out of it because I'm looking at it from the outside and I can tell you you're going to get hurt. Like I can tell you I've been there. I know it like 
just don't do it. Just walk away. Don't do it. Yeah. Just, just talk to me. Any other learning curves that you think the listeners could benefit from or learn from that that you've already taken the the course on? Oh man, how much how much time do we have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. The biggest ones I would say is definitely get a double layered insurance. There's okay. um in in short term. Do you have proper insurance on yours? That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we do have uh, short-term rental insurance. Yeah. So yeah. there's a company called Proper Insurance that I always recommend because the difference with proper insurance, if you own the property, you can insure through them. They're more expensive. They're probably your most expensive option. But the okay. biggest thing with them is if something goes wrong and the house is down for any extended period of time. Yeah. So for instance, in one... It, it, to finish the point, if the house goes down for any time, a period of time, you got to take it offline, they'll pay your lost income. They're yeah. the only company I know of that will actually pay your lost income. So, and, and I'm actually, I'm dealing with it right now on one of my houses. I have a claim in right now because we had this small toilet leak that turned into, well, the whole subfloor is rotted out. And now the whole bathroom has to get torn apart. And like wow. half the house is getting remodeled. Wow. <clears throat> so it was just neglect over time, but yeah. you know, it turned into a massive insurance claim for the owner. This is an arbitrage house. It turned into a massive claim for the the owner. And now the house has been offline for two weeks and I have no end in sight. And I'm losing, you know, I keep losing, I keep having to cancel bookings. And so I just file a claim and now I'm going to get an insurance payout for the income that I would have had for this month. And this happened to me two years ago also in another house where the air conditioner in the attic wasn't level. And yeah. so because it wasn't level, all the condensation was draining. Instead of going out the drain line, it was running back into the flexible ductwork in the attic. Wow. And it just accumulated over time and pooled and pooled and pooled. And eventually it broke the ductwork loose because there was so much like we do. We thought a pipe burst in the house. That's how much water there was. Oh, it, wow. it, like it was it flooded the house. It took the ceiling down. It took it went through to the first floor. So there's just tons of damage and the house had to be restored. And it was it was down for about a month. And I still got you know, after my deductible, which was $1,000, I still got a $6,000 payout for that month. Yeah. So it was great in that sense that, you know, and same thing right now. But like, if you don't have that, like a friend of mine, I was talking to him and he's like, he's like, oh, I take direct bookings off, off platform, which I highly recommend also. But I was like, oh, well, you have insurance, right? He's like, no. <laughs> I was like, Dude, if anything happens, you are so screwed. Yeah. That's hurt on your property. You're so screwed because you have no coverage. Yeah. So insurance is is well worth the so so proper insurance. That's yes. the name of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're out of I think Montana or Idaho. And basically, you just want, you know, the pay lost income and obviously, you know, short term, you know, rentals. Yeah. Yeah, because they cover everything. So so in, in another case, like actually, ironically, the house that is getting remodeled right now got completely trashed back in like May. And I had a group that came through. I don't know if I told you about this, but they were they had to be doing drugs or something. But they wow. took all our ceramic mugs out of the cabinet and were like they're smashed all over the house. Like they were throwing them around the house, but they threw them through the oven door which is like pressurized glass, but they smashed the oven door. They threw them through the TV. Like the house was destroyed. And Did I, they get into a fight or something? I have <laughs> no idea, man. I, I think they had to be doing drugs because it was so weird. There was like the carpet upstairs in the bedrooms. Like they were like, they had hot sauce and there was hot sauce all in the carpets. And then all four beds, kind of nasty, but all four beds were like covered in puke. Jesus, like covered, like end to end. And I was like, like my cleaner took a video walkthrough and we're, we're all just like, like, wow. So that, that's hell. a horror story. So tell me, what did that lead look like when they first reached out to you? Um, cause usually we, we've noticed ourselves with some horror situations like that. Like we've had somebody that came in as a party 
it, came, it started off as, and we look back, we look back yeah. to see, okay, how did this originally start? Yeah. And it, and it started off all innocent, like, you know, we're having a stay vacation. Yeah. Uh, and we don't do those anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, a little getaway for, you know, him and his girlfriend. And then it turns out to, they put it on social media and it's, it's a full blown, you know, party for all hours, like 250 people. You know? Yeah. We don't yeah. do those anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. That, yeah, I mean, see, I was just at this event and, and everyone, everyone can make an argument for everything, right? Sure. So, yeah. like, I don't do one night stays at all. And Phoenix, yes. like, not a prayer because 80% of them are going to turn into parties. Maybe not that high, but you know what I'm saying. So sure. there's too much risk of parties yep. in that case. It was like the same thing. It was it was like innocent, like, oh, it's just a family get together. But the thing is, is like, I don't I don't think it it did turn into a party necessarily because we didn't get any noise complaints. We didn't get any like, you know, and one thing that I don't have that is is usually recommended is the minute noise detectors. Yeah. But I mean, man, I don't know. And, and so the funny thing about that is she messaged us on the day of checkout. And she was like, I think my friends broke something in the house. Let me know how much I owe you. There's they broke like one or two minor things. And we were like, all right, no big deal. You know, whatever. And we go in and we're like, broke one or two minor things. You destroyed the house. You might have left one or two minor things untouched. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you for like, not breaking I, the windows. Like, yeah. Hell, you know? Yeah. I was like, I have to replace the ovens because to get a replacement door for the oven is going to take forever and yeah. I can get a new oven in tomorrow, you know? So the whole point of that was... Luckily, I had proper insurance because yeah. I could have claim in with them because then we had to cancel off the a booking. We had a same day booking, yeah. like a same day check in. And luckily, I had the insurance because we had to cancel that. And so we put a file, a claim in with Airbnb and it it's still ongoing. This is from May. Wow. And but they came back with it was a thirty seven hundred dollar claim. And they came back and gave us like $248, which was half of the cost of the TV. And I was like, I think you missed something. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're so happy. I'm like, you didn't notice the discrepancy between $248 and $3,700? Yeah. You know, there's a little bit of a gap there. I could see if it was like $3,400 or if it was like four or five, $600 claim, you give me 250 bucks. But... <laughs> You know, you're missing yeah. a few things here. <laughs> yeah. So, so key with that, too, is obviously like uh, as, as many people try selling you the idea of, well, there's a million dollar policy with yeah. uh, with Airbnb. Well, Airbnb isn't always on your side as much as right. you would think they are going to be. Yeah. So have your own third party additional insurance would help yes. out and tremendously. Yes, 100 percent. Insurance is is critical. The other thing is, you know as you build this business, you know, I just went to this event this weekend. As you build this business, I mean, you want to outsource your time, like the low level tasks, you know, as you get multiple properties, that's where, you know, the VA company that, you know, having virtual assistants is super critical because it starts eating all of your time. Right. Sure. And that like, when I got to 12 properties, I, um, it would just between inquiries and, and whatever's coming up with the house and pools and landscaping and everything like you don't want to be dealing with that constantly. So, so, you know, you just want to just be able to outsource everything. Get, yes. Get you want to outsource that your Sorry. templates and, and really start preparing yourself for success with it. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to outsource your, your low level tasks that, you know, unless it really requires your time that, you, you know, you want to be you want to be outsourcing it you, unless it's something that you really want to want to be doing, sure. like like focusing on with the house. Unless it's something you want to be totally focused on, you, you don't want to be doing it. What other like software or yes. uh, technology really helps the business? Yes. So channel managers, channel managers are critical because they'll tie everything together. If, if you have listings in multiple platforms. 
they'll tie everything together. And then if you uh, like all your communication, your messages, your finances, you can you can run your finances through and, and then all of your messaging, you can automate messaging because message times are critical, getting in touch with people as fast as possible. You want to be responding to messages as fast as possible. So, you know, you can automate a lot of messages and also like sending out like I automate like I think seven messages in the process all the way from once they send the inquiry to the night before check in the day of check in the night before checkout, actually the day after check in, we send them a message saying was everything all right, because we give them their opportunity to complain at that point. Yeah. And so that they're not, you know, checking out and going, oh, by the way, there was this, this and this wrong with the house. Yeah. And then night before checkout, day of checkout. And then the big thing, also a big critical step is the day of their checkout at like five o'clock in the afternoon. I send them a message saying, hey, a five star review would be super beneficial to not only our listing, but our hosting status. Anything less actually penalizes our account. So if you have any concerns that you want to list, if you could list them in the private comments rather than the public comments, that would be super helpful. And by doing that, there's a psychological factor to it. But one, they're getting hit from the platforms for the review right about that time. They're just getting home. So it's top of mind. But also when you say, which is totally true, by the way, that you get penalized, oh, yeah. it's less than five stars. But if you tell them that, then a lot of times, if they had less than a five-star experience, I get one of two responses, like either they're going to leave us a five-star and tell us what we could have done better in the private comments, or the other one that I get is they say, you know, we don't feel like we can honestly leave a five-star review, so we're not going to leave you any review. Mm -hmm. And no review is better than a bad review. Yeah. So. Have you ever had anybody kind of backfire with that? And I ask because we used to do the exact same thing and eventually we stopped because we had, I think it was just one, but it might've been multiple people kind of take it as if we were trying to bribe them. Mm. And I really didn't like that approach because I'm not trying to bribe you, but I'm just trying to educate you on, hey, if you leave anything less than a five, we're getting screwed over in many ways. Yeah. And like, we're relying on this resource. So right now that you're educated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To my knowledge, it hasn't backfired on us yet. So I mean, I've had I've had a lot of good success with that. Not not that I can think of that. And, it's and I, I think that was a rare occasion that we had, I wouldn't be opposed to redoing it, honestly. And I, I don't know, we might be doing it. I, I don't manage that side of the business yeah, Jennifer yeah. does with our assistant. But I know that was something that I was very shocked with. Like, really? I thought everybody, all, you know, asked. Yeah. Uh, well, well because what I found, like, so I just was coaching somebody on this, because if you're not asking for the review, yep. then most people only leave reviews when they're negative. You know, 80% of people True. don't take the time to leave a good review. Yep. Unless, but if you're telling them actively, like, this really helps our account, this helps us with yep. our hosting status and our listing to keep ranking. If they had a really good time, then they'll go and leave a leave a good review. Yeah. And I get probably like 85 to 90% feedback in the form of reviews. Yeah. You know, like 85 to 90% of my stays leave reviews. But I was just talking to somebody about this and and he was like, man, I'm only getting bad reviews. I don't get it. And I said, no, you got to go in and ask for the good reviews. He's like, I've I've had, uh, you know, he, he just launched this property back in, I think, April, April or May. And he's like, and I looked and he only had like four or five reviews, but they were all like, you Not know, good yeah. three stars. And, and but he's yeah. had like 20 something stays. Yeah. So I was like, dude, you have to be hammering the good reviews. You yeah, know? That's true. That's good. Tom, talk to me. Is there anything that you think just for educational purposes and, and just total value add for this? you know, listeners out there, um, any other software or technology or anything? I know you said channel managers. You also mentioned like minute noise uh, detectors, yeah. uh, so, proper insurance. Yes, what else can really set people up for success? I think you definitely need a dynamic pricing tool. So the, the three main ones are Beyond Pricing, Price Labs, and Wheelhouse. 
I'm not too familiar with Wheelhouse, so I can't really speak about that one. Some people use it, but the big ones that I always hear are Beyond Pricing and, and Price Labs. I use both of them. I do use both of them. Price Labs is a lot more cost effective. Personally, I like Beyond Pricing's platform much better, but yeah. their cost is they charge 1% of bookings versus a $35 flat rate per booking on Price Labs. So when you're first starting out, I would recommend Beyond Pricing because it's not that much of an expense difference. But once you get up to you know multiple properties, that 1% starts adding up and it can be the difference of several hundred dollars a month in, in profit. But they both work great and they integrate with different channel managers. From a channel manager standpoint, I would recommend like Guesty or Hospitable or Hostfully is also phenomenal, actually. They are actively building up their CRM platform, which one thing that I've noticed is a lot of these platforms they build and then they stop improving. And it's the same way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the one that I used for the good first couple of years of my business, I don't want to say the names, so I don't want to knock them, but their system's very clunky. I liked it for the reporting aspect, but yeah. everything else is very like, it needs a lot of improvement and their support yeah. is terrible. Yeah. And so like Hostfully is constantly improving their software. But the other thing that Hostfully has is digital guidebooks. So even if you don't use their channel manager software, their digital guidebooks are fantastic because you can put in there like local attractions. You can put all your check-in information, your Wi-Fi, your any notes with the house, like where things are close to the house, things to do, any notes you need. You can put in, you know, in Arizona, we like you can put in distance to the Grand Canyon. You can throw maps in there. It's really intricate. Yeah. And it's a really great software. I love it. So yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, you need pricing software and you need the digital guidebooks are really good. The other thing is there's a product called StayFi. So it's so Real quick, I just went to this event and I think it's very important for people to think about the short-term rental business as an actual business. A lot of people get into it just kind of as a money grab and they're like, oh, I can get in and just do, you know, throw it on Airbnb and make some money and it's a side hustle, right? But if you think about it like an actual business and start treating it like a business, like one thing you want to do is be capturing your guests and the way to capture every guest that comes through the house. There's a product called StayFi. And with StayFi, like you want to be creating a direct booking site. So, you know, there's different influencers in the space that you can, if you want to call them influencers, and a lot of them were at this event. And and one, you know, one guy, Bill Faith, he said, if people stay at your house once through a platform like Airbnb or VRBO, good for you. If they stay twice, you've failed. If they book a second time through the platform, you've failed because you should be having a direct booking site and booking them through that. And I thought that was really interesting. And the way that you capture them, if they're booking through the site, you have your own direct booking site and you build your audience. But what you can do is with StayFi, you can capture, it goes in the house. And essentially, if somebody wants to log on to the internet, they have to enter their email. And by entering their email and agreeing to the terms and conditions, that puts them into your email list. And now you can retarget them. And you don't get just the person who booked the house. You get everyone in the house. So if there's six people staying in there and they all want to log on and it's six friends, right? And Brandon made the booking. Well, now I'm only getting your email. But if everyone in the house has to log on to the network and use their email, now you're getting all six emails and you can retarget to those people and send them to your direct booking site. What if you know they have a bad stay afterwards and you're like, Ugh, I do not want these people to ever like we'll never rent to them again. And like you gotta manually pull them out of the CRM or the data. Yeah, you would yeah, you would have to go and, and manually pull them back out okay. but you can hire that out you know yeah, yeah you can 
Yeah, yeah, and that's that's where like assistants come into play because you can yeah. be like, all right, no, get we don't want to <laughs> we don't want to yeah. market to these guys. Get them out of here. Yeah, that's good. All right, well, any final words for the audience? You know, words of motivation or anything that could potentially help them? You know, push over the edge, get off the fence, and actually implement the same exact strategies that you have in the past. I think you know you definitely need to be diligent about what you're doing and not just you know a lot of people jump into the space and want to go for a money grab and they're the ones that kind of ruin it for the rest of us but i would say treat it like a business conserve your time if you need virtual assistant management for the uh business you can check us out at strstreamlines.com we also do remote design and setup for houses so if you want to set up in another market we can help you do that. But, you know, really be diligent about your time and be a good host. You know, yeah. it's just learn the craft, learn the business, make sure people are having a good experience. The whole business is shifting towards experience stays. And also, you know, I mean, we could go on for a very long time about this, but look into other avenues of making money. If you want to make really make money in this business, look in, you have to get off the platforms and and look at other avenues like insurance. And, you know, you can get in with travel nursing, but like pick a niche and focus on it. But there's all different ways to make money in this short term rental business. It's, it's an it's a beautiful, crazy little niche that we have in the real estate market. Yeah. And, um, you know, but just take action, man. That's the biggest thing. Take action. And don't take time for granted. You know, Justin Colby was at this event and he was like, don't be so arrogant that you think tomorrow is a given. You know? Yeah, that's good. I love so, it. Well, I appreciate you, bro, for being on. Guys, how can people get a hold of you? If I don't know if you can see it on on here on, on my my tag is uh, on Instagram. You can get in touch with me at Tom John Swan underscore. But if you take my name, I'm the only one on there. Cool. So that's probably the best way to get in touch with me on Instagram. Okay, awesome. Well, guys, I know that you took a ton of value from this. You got a bunch of notes just like I do. So reach out to Tom. He'll be able to help put the missing pieces together for you and help out in every single way. We have Airbnbs ourselves, short-term rentals. And man, oh man, it is a blessing. It's something that, you know, with the right systems in place. And I truly believe it's, it's not many. It's like for a true business, of course, like any business, you got to get systems and, and people in place to make sure that you're over delivering the service. But there's not too, too many moving parts. Like you can really have something up rocking and rolling with the right proper education that you guys soaked up today. You can really get some tremendous movement very quick. And one of his students just did it in 24 hours. So yeah, uh, with a couple extra days being your brand new one and really getting the right guidance, you could do exactly the same thing. So I hope you guys found as much value as I did today. Make sure as always that you hit that subscribe button for Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. You'll get the newest notification every single Monday when we drop a new podcast episode and leave a five-star review. Let us know exactly how you guys feel about it. And as always, we are geared towards educating, motivating, and preparing you to actually take action in real estate to change your life. So confident we did that today. So leave that five-star review. Greatly appreciate all the love. If you guys want to get a hold of me, you can do so on Instagram. It is Brandon Elliott Investments. Otherwise, Facebook.com forward slash Brandon Elliott Investor. And then if you're looking for any credit repair done for you services, check out creditrepairmobile.com. Otherwise, if you're really looking to do this stuff yourself, like if you're looking to get the knowledge from credit, the stuff that we teach in Credit Council Elite, where you know, educate, fix, build, and leverage, understanding exactly how the banks and lenders are judging you so you know how to play the game, how you can fix credit faster than anyone in the industry. I'm talking hard inquiries in a couple hours, collections over 100K, bankruptcies, late payments, derogatory remarks, you name it, removing that stuff in a few hours, getting fast results, life-changing bankruptcies removed, and then also being able to build up credit. Like get you to the 800 club possibly for the first time and be able to do your first mass apply and get several six figures. Ryan just did his first one and got $454,000 in new credit lines with one card at 100 k So you can do this every six months for yourself and get multiple six figures, even up to seven figures in funding within 12 months on business credit. After you get all this funding, you can leverage it and put it to work and really get the momentum from that. So 
investing in real estate and arbitrage and e-com and all these different platforms that really, whatever your goal is and your heart is content on, I want to just, if money is the issue to get there, let me show you how to be able to do it. Plus travel hacking and so much more. So if you guys are interested in that, check out creditcounselelite.com. That's www.creditcounselelite.com. You'll be able to get more information there. And uh, as always, we have our Tulum trip, our event down in Tulum, Mexico, coming up September 19th to the 25th. If you guys are interested, we'd love to see you guys down there. Reach out, DM me on social media, and we'll take it from there. God bless you guys all. And Tom, appreciate you so much, man. It was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Of course. Till next time, guys. Stay blessed. This has been another episode of Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, brought to you by Brandon Elliott. For more information, please visit brandonelliottinvestments.com. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks again for joining. Until next time, God bless.